All right, so I'm going to do a one-part video. Hopefully, it's going to be one part critiquing Common Sense, a pamphlet by Thomas Paine, somewhere around the 18th century. I have the year, but I'm not going to be specific because you guys are cocksuckers, so I don't give a fuck about all of you. Try and look up this shit. Alright, so, there are several sections which I won't talk about, mainly sections 3 and 4 because they don't really do much other than talk about the history and the military and those current events where I'm just focusing on the political philosophy. Now. That just means that for the most part, I'm only going to speak about sections 1 and 2. Why? Because sections 1 and 2 are ones that have the most political philosophy and content to actually talk about. Now let's first discuss Paine's differentiation of government and society. Okay. The societies, any positive effect that occurs when people are integrated and working together functionally. Whereas governments, a vicarious institution whose goal is to protect us from our own vices, I agree on this to a slight degree. Or maybe even to a heavy degree. We use government as a necessary evil. That usually means that he's talking about the state too. And that I don't agree with. Because the state is a necessary evil. Whatever the hell that means. However, government's a necessary means of authority. Okay. And pain considers and and then from here on he points out um that people want to have a voice to participate in their own government, that it's in the nature of people to desire this. But they need some representation. And then he goes on to criticize the monarchy, even knowing that this is what John Locke was in favor of under some small constitutional minarchism. The end result was that he criticized it, he used a lot of biblical texts and things of that nature to criticize He also used a lot of history. Hmm, these cookies are good. No, they suck. Mm. Such a pig, I'm wiping my nose and eating cookies at the same time. Okay, so pretty much it's settled. The guy is criticizing all forms of monarchy, claims he's advocating democracy, when he's actually advocating a republic which grows under consolidations and wealth and that uh, basically buries entry subsidization of corporations and other the formation of corporations which can only exist with a state because even though the state doesn't make corporations the state 
helps turn normal firms into corporations. Now, he doesn't say any of this, but little does he know that this representative democracy is just going to form Rome 2.0, where the individuals have some power, but there's going to be a lot of wealth and power and consolidation that's being taken into account. And I'm being very holistic here, but pretty much this is a very holistic writing, so I have to like fit the framework framework so that my criticisms look like they can just aesthetically look like they can belong to a critique on this series and they are. He goes out of his way to criticize something that sure blows, but his arguments are horrible. Everything's interrupting me. Mom, it's a phone. Mom, it's a phone. And to use go out of your way and make these biblical arguments and uh, criticize the past ill decisions of the monarchy kings shows truly how you can only do ad hominems and non sequiturs. And his only good arguments were against the English monarchy constitution. Even then, all a constitution can do is give the state more power. And because he's advocating one, that's even more ridiculous and hell bent. So what am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is that Thomas Paine's 48 page pamphlet historically it's important but philosophically it's just a piece of turd on a napkin. I mean, he has a poor understanding of democracy. This is something I don't advocate myself, other than the last ditch effort. Well, second to last ditch effort. And you know, he basically criticizes the monarchy with several different logical fallacies and trying to give a point. Yeah, all he has is consequential ethics and the use of theology and religion. He doesn't really have much under criticisms of the monarchy, whereas I can do that very easily with my knowledge of sociology. Now overall, I'll classify this video as one of my worst ones because I'm just being a pretentious dick here and saying that I can do shit but I'm not but all in all you know it to be true Thomas Paine is a minarchist who fails to achieve minarchy under his views under his philosophical writings that we have we have right now that isn't minarchy no it's a fascist state. It's not the absolute level. It's not the absolute totalitarian state. But under a few modifications, it could reach that sweet spot. And at least John Locke had an idea of what these terms were before he went on to criticize them. 
I'm probably gonna do another part to this, but really, this is all that needs to be said. He has confusions between these terminologies, and he's moderately conceited. You can tell. No, I'm just bullshitting on that part. Alright, I'm just done.